nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hey everybody, I'm Amanda with Dev Express and welcome to our Twitch live stream. I am here with Arig. Arig, are you there? All right, can you hear me? Um, there's something going on on your end where you're like Mad Maxing. Do you know what I'm talking about? You're like, and moving at the speed of light. <laughs> okay, great. So while you're gone, too late. Uh. <laughs> I'm I <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I can hear him. Oh. All right, everybody. So while Arg is gone, let's talk about the real, the real things happening in the world, AKA where is Kate Middleton? <laughs> okay. Oh, Arg, oh no. We were we were gonna discuss. Let me go Kate and Middleton share my screen. And where what's hap what, oh. what's happening in the royal family? I actually have been following Google News, and I get little recommendations about the royal family. So inadvertently, I kind of feel like I know, or I feel like I'm an expert on the issue too. Even really? though I haven't read the stories, I read the headlines. Doctored images. Barack Obama was was. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so I dream of working. We've got some comments. I'm not I'm not hearing our egg. I dream of working with our egg speed from Nikita. Yes. He was moving at uh, superhuman speed. Hello, Baku Tech. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're going to have technical issues. We could hear him fine in our pre-test, but once you start streaming to Twitch and YouTube, I guess it can anything can go awry. Jonathan says, nope, he couldn't hear Arg. All right, so looks like Arg is coming All back right. in. Yes, they can't keep me down. We're going to go live again. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure you love that. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Done it now, it controls. Okay, I can Entire hear you. Screen. I think this, but can we hear you on this... where it matters? Yeah, but that's the big question. We're going to find out I the mean, you and I that, could so... chit chat all day. So, okay, I'm just gonna continue on and see if, you know, we get any traction whatsoever. So the idea is uh, we're gonna be resuming our study into .NET MAUI. And uh, there's a few differences. I don't know if you noticed it or you caught these differences last time, but I was basically the lone guy at DevExpress who was doing everything in Mac OS. Me and our Australian were the, were the two Mac OS guys uh, and actually, by necessity, I decided to transition to Windows um, and try to see what the story is today in Visual Studio. So we're not using Visual Studio code anymore. We're using 
proper or Visual or yeah VS Code. We're using Visual Studio proper, uh, and uh, there were some questions I had, and a few reasons I was avoiding this to begin with. Uh, one major reason is that I want to be able to deploy to a Mac, or I want to be able to debug remotely on a, a Mac or have a Mac simulator, um, an iOS simulator that is, to be more precise. Uh, I could do all those things on Windows today, actually. Uh, I was a little bit iffy on whether or not those things were possible because you have to do an SSH connection to the Mac machine in that case, but I was able to negotiate that and I'll go through the steps that were involved there. Uh, but first of all, let's see if I can actually, I think I rearranged some of my screens here, but let me, let, let me go and pull up, uh, I believe, yeah. So first I wanna reprise kind of where we were before, kind of how we were attacking things in the past. Essentially, the idea was that we had this great nifty extension um, written by one of our guys, Nikita. Uh, it's the .NET Meteor extension, and basically the idea is that it's kind of a stand-in replacement for the base uh, C-Sharp dev kit debugger. And this is really great stuff. It even has a little hot reload feature. So uh, this hot reload, enable hot reload, if you basically run this, uh, in your uh, Maui program CS, you add this builder that enable hot reload, uh, then you'll have hot reload as well. So basically our debugger uh, Meteor extension is great. I'm not gonna be showing it today because if you're in Visual Studio Code, the, uh, the main sort of hindrance in Windows is that you don't get the option to pair to Mac. So since I definitely do wanna show pair to Mac, we're gonna uh, focus on the debugger in Visual Studio proper. Um, so I know that that's kind of a heartbreaker. People are kind of you know hoping that we could just stick to VS Code, Aww. but sadly we got to go. We got to go back to Visual Studio. And I got to say that after having been away from Visual Studio for, for these sorts of tasks for a while, Visual Studio has kind of you know improved a lot. I'm kind of impressed. Uh, part of it is that there is this thing. I don't know if you heard of it. It's called Copilot. Uh, I uh, I was told constantly was nagged about Codepilot in my Visual Studio, and uh, I I think I got the nag screen to go away. I enabled it apparently, so I got this thing called Copilot support now going on. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> uh, so I want to talk about kind of what we're going to be integrating today. So in Windows today, we're going to be building for Android and hopefully also for iOS. We're going to be using our free .NET MAUI controls. And free as in you could start using them today. Uh, you can basically, if you go to devexpress.com and you search for our free offers, if you go to DevExpress, free offers, the very, I think, last one is called MAUI. So if you go, yeah, actually it's the first one. The first one's .NET MAUI. And basically what this means is that in Mac, uh, if you go to devexpress.com download manager, well, maybe I shouldn't even show this, but if you go to nuget.devexpress.com, you get a nuget feed, which I've compromised many times for myself, so I won't do that a third time. But basically, the the fact is, live you get learn, a nuget right? feed for Mac. Yeah, live and learn. Uh, for everyone else, you get the installer. You get, I think, uh, you can once you download it. The installer itself does not have the bits. What the installer does is that in your Visual Studio, if you go to, and I never do this, so. Bear with me here. Will I? Let me use the search functionality in this. This is the NuGet package manager. I never use a package manager in Visual Studio, so yeah, manage NuGet packages for a solution. Sure, why not? And let me go to the one more time. So let's do the package manager. So in tools. And let's go ahead and NuGet Package Manager. There it is, Package Manager for Solution. And there we go. Okay, so if you uh, look here, it says Package Source. What, we, what our installer does is that it adds one more package source here. Uh, and I did it myself. That's why it's, it's called DevX Online. It's called something else when you run the installer. Uh, and you also get these local NuGet 
uh, sources so that you can actually use the installation you have uh, so you don't have to connect online every time. But the point is that actually everything in Maui is self-contained within NuGet. You don't have to worry about the installer whatsoever. That's why it works in VS Code completely. The only reason we're using Visual Studio today is because there is a feature called Pair to Mac. So basically, uh, I want to run through that from start to finish because I had a lot of problems, to truth be told, connecting to my Mac to begin with. I didn't really believe it was possible, but I actually did get it to work. So. I have right off screen a Mac. Uh, it's an M2, sorry, it's, a, it's an M1 Mac, I believe. It's an M1 Mac Air, MacBook Air. And uh, basically what I did there is I ran a, a little command, in my terminal there, fconfig, because it's a, it's a Unix or Linux style command. And uh, now I know the IP address that we're assigned. So basically, I need to know the IP address of this Mac and it has to be on the same network as what Visual Studio is on. So uh, I that, that was not so easy to do actually in our work Wi-Fi, but I was able to do it. Uh, now that I, we're both this computer and the other Mac are uh, on the same Wi-Fi, I can actually connect to that Mac as well. So actually I've done this a few times, so I've already paired to this Mac a bunch of times. But the point is that each time I connect that Mac to Wi-Fi, it gets a new IP address. So uh, I just ran ifconfig on the Mac right now, and it gave me an IP address of 172.22.531. And that's basically its identity and in this work network. And, and like I said, it's an IP address that's being assigned to it based on kind of availability. So hit add. Uh, did it add three? It did not add three one. Let's pair one more time. Cannot resolve, it says. Uh, well, add to Mac 172.22.531. Uh, and three one. Okay. And sometimes, and I, I like, okay, great. It actually picked up. So now I have to actually log in as myself and this is the other thing I was trying to get at, that uh, we're using Windows today mainly because of necessity, because it turns out I just dropped my MacBook like a week ago, and it's been acting up ever since. You dropped just didn't it? feel like it's super, <laughs> yeah, I, I fell asleep with it on my lap, and then it, I woke up to a big crash, and the crash was it falling onto the ground. It's been kind of funky ever since then. It just kind oh, of yeah. randomly crashes. <laughs> yeah, it's a big problem. Uh, I had to reformat everything, so it was kind of like, uh, what's my password? And uh, I, I had to install, oh. for the purposes of Maui, I had to reinstall Xcode and the Android SDK and .NET and all that stuff. So it has, basically, the whole rigmarole that it just went over was that it was running mono, uh, it did an SSH connection to that Mac OS, uh, you know, instance. And uh, now we have, this green little icon is lit up, meaning that we're paired to Mac. And so we get a few more options. So we get some iOS simulators. We get different simulators to choose from. I'm actually going to hit run on this iOS 15 plus, sorry, iPhone 15 plus. Uh, and I'm going to do that. I'm oh, sorry, it's the pro. Gosh, the naming conventions. But basically, I'm going to run this so that it starts up the emulator because the emulator takes a while. And while it's doing that, we'll do other things. So right now, what it's doing is it's spinning up an iOS emulator. And it's going to be spinning that onto the screen, hopefully in this area. I'll move it if it doesn't. Uh, but the, the point there is that I'm not really haven't discussed really what the project is we're going to be talking about today yet. Uh, but uh, what I'm getting at is that I was really kind of pessimistic we would be able to pair it to the Mac. Uh, and then this last week of experimentations proved that actually it is possible, it's feasible. So if you're looking to do development completely on Windows and you don't want to touch a Mac, uh, you bad news, you still need a Mac to deploy to the App Store, to the, the Apple App Store, but you don't have to do everything on the Mac. You can actually work within uh, 
uh, Windows if that's what you're comfortable with. And like I said, it's loading a lot because it's loading the iOS simulator. And once that's loaded, I'll, I'll put that aside. Uh, we're also going to be using an Android simulator, and I'll go over kind of the the steps that are required for that. But uh, so we're getting the iOS simulator right now. Uh, the other thing I want to go over, and whoa, here we we just got it. Okay, and let me go ahead and play around with this. Okay, so here I it's our app in iOS and. We don't really care about the app, so I'm just gonna not debug. I just want the emulator to, to be there. One other funny thing I did kind of notice about Maui and Windows that's kind of different is that uh, Windows PCs, they are kind of like, uh, I don't know why, they're, they're just big, beefy machines sometimes. They're not like sleek, like the the uh, the Airs or the, the MacBook Pros. So uh, I have this really big beefy PC that when the fan goes off, it's like a Harrier jet going uh, and, and lifting <laughs> off. So uh, that's what I'm kind of, as soon as the emulators start, I get that sound. So that's just something I've learned to deal with, with, uh, with Maui, uh, because you do need emulators. The other emulator I definitely need is I need an Android emulator. The one that you'll probably see by default is this middle entry and actually, I used it for a while. I was not happy with it. And I researched the why it is the case that it was so slow because it didn't make sense. Why would the Android one be slow uh, relative to the iOS version when the iOS emulator is uh, you know totally foreign to kind of uh, Windows and I'm actually connecting to a, a Mac to do it, to run it. Uh, so there's something called Android Device Manager. You'll have to enter into this thing. Uh, if you've used Xamarin uh, iOS or Xamarin Android in the past, you kind of like are very already familiar with this. But this is the default system image for the emulator. The uh, hardware accelerated Android emulator is this one. I installed it. Uh, basically, I wanted to make this available in Visual Studio. The answer is that you turn it off and turn it on again. So that's what I did with Visual Studio. I turned Visual Studio off. I turned it back on again. And once I did that, I got all these other Android emulators available to me. So you'll see here, I got these different entries. So these two were the ones that became available. This custom is kind of something I had to do, and this is kind of maybe not so obvious, but if you basically copy, I think this one of these options is to basically duplicate and edit. And that's what I did to this option down here. And the reason is that it was not actually appearing without errors. So I actually had to go in and uh, edit a few of the uh, the uh, the properties here. The properties I actually had to edit on the from this is I actually had to get rid of this thing called skin.path and I had to rename this skin.name to the version that was working on the other emulator. So the I just basically changed skin.name to the thing that the working emulator looked like and. I don't really know what it did or why the error disappeared, but it made the error disappear and that's all that matters. So I'm gonna run the Android emulator and this is the hardware accelerated Android emulator. It runs a little bit smoother than the base Android emulator and actually it runs even better than the iOS emulator. Uh, and we're gonna go through kind of a use case in Maui, which I think is kind of unique to having an actual mobile device and that usually if we're talking about like a desktop app or a um, or an app that is going to be in something like a browser or like a spa framework app like an angular app uh, you get lots of facilities that you don't necessarily get in uh, like a, a mobile uh, space you, you get the ability to have multiple windows you get your mouse you get your keyboard it's great uh, but what you don't get is you don't get things like your camera or, you know, the ability for you to do touch actions and for you to, for you to actually do things like um, signing uh, quickly uh, on like a document. So I'm sure usually when you go out and you, you, you buy something and you pay for it, uh, you know, the, the waiter usually presents you with some sort of ability to sign off on the what you just paid for, the, the credit card. Uh, and you're able to do that on a mobile device usually these days with Square. Uh, the point is that 
we do offer the facility using our Office File API uh, to you to basically do uh, signing of PDFs. So, for those of you who may not be aware, if you go to docs.devexpress.com, we have something called the Office File API. It's available standalone, and it's also available with the Universal subscription. And there are lots of different ways you can go about signing documents. Uh, there's a few things that are important here. One is that there's like two different variants of what it means to sign a document. One is like digital signatures, and these are the boring signatures where you basically just, the computer verifies the signature is valid, you've signed it with a PFX certificate, uh, and it, optionally you have some sort of image like this. You have Jane Cooper, her signature down here. Uh, these are what uh, digital signatures look like. And then there's also visual signatures. I'm not sure if it's listed here as well, but if I go to visual signature, yeah, add a visual signature. So that's an option as well. Offspell API lets you actually take an image and stick it onto the, uh, the document. And it looks very similar to what Jane Cooper signature looked up here. Uh, the problem is that you can't really you don't get like a walk unless you have a Wacom tablet or something like that. You don't have a pen to actually write the signature on. And for me, it's not a problem because I've oh I happen to have a uh, PNG image of my signature that I affix to things because I do it so often. But it would be nice to actually be able to use these smartphones we have in our pockets to sign. Uh, and that's the goal today. We want to be able to allow our smartphones to let us actually sign documents. And the great news is that you can kind of take half or maybe even 75% of what you need, which is Office File API, and combine it with the rest. And the rest being a mobile solution in Maui to do the signature. And it doesn't really matter if you do it on Android or if you do it on iOS. So let me go ahead and see if our Android emulator has loaded up. Looks like it hasn't. So maybe I need to run it one more time. And uh, while well, that is running yet again, let's talk about kind of what sort of examples we have. So if you go to, if you start from GitHub, the account that we have that is used and indexed by our examples, or our KB examples, or knowledge-based examples. So if you go and you search in our in our support center, Uh, if you search here for these different examples, uh, what you'll see listed here is actually indexed from our uh, DevExpress examples account. It's not our main account. This is the account we just really use for examples. And if you go here, this is actually a great place to get started with Maui. So you can go and see things in uh, the different Maui examples that we have. Uh, like searching here. I want to kind of touch on kind of what problems you may have if uh, you're you're actually running these examples. I think it's kind of useful to, to, to for a counter or whatever. I think a good example start off with that this is kind of our main demo. So I don't know if my audio is saying hopefully it is. Yeah, you're are you're you're, you're doing gotta, the Mad Max uh, again. I was oh, okay, robot in, in and out. Let me try and I wonder Let what me it go is ahead and try reconnecting one more time. You know, I have that it's related to my Wi Fi connection. Um but uh, let me go ahead and uh, try one more time. You sound to, good now. Uh, you sound good right exit now. Exit and come back. So, okay, all right. We'll try. One more, we'll try touch and go and see if we can go. And uh, <laughs> if it's gonna interrupt us one more time, I'll try to rejoin. Anyway, so I was getting at that. We have lots of examples, but the big question is how do you actually run them and how do you run them and get over and the thing is that part of it is genuinely I think 
our fault because it's kind of like works on my machine. It works on All our right, machines. Honey, we can't I think verify you that. There. Yes. Sorry. Let's try. Let's okay, try I'm a refresh. Pop out. Yeah. All right. Sorry, everybody. I don't know. Maybe we're having some uh, internet issues at the office. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm back. We're not done. Don't worry. But uh, Arig was really dipping in and out there, and I. I don't think anyone was able to follow what he was doing. So let's see if he makes it back in and his audio's fixed. <clears throat> I, know, I do feel very like, um, again, I, it happens. It's so interesting though, because we come on about 30 minutes prior to these and our systems are all go. And then we hit start and, Wah, wah. Um, all right, well, we're still waiting. Um, I will let you all know, and maybe um, people are attending this year. We are going to be at Build 2024, Microsoft Build. We would love to see you there. It's our first time back in person since um, 2019. So it'll be awesome. We're going to have a booth. Uh, we're going to have cool stickers to hand out and demos to do. You'll see Arig in person where we won't have audio issues. I'm talking about build. And well, we'll you know, be there. now with Apple Vision, we may have audio issues. Now that everything is actually going totally AR and VR. You know, we may actually have connection issues in the wild. Oh, because we'll be but, like holograms? Yeah. Yeah, we will be there, but not actually there. There. But anyway... <laughs> I think what happened, my theory as to what happened, folks, and I think it's my fault, is that the strain of these emulators is causing some problems and glitches in the browsers that we're connecting to. And I think that uh, this Android emulator coming to life caused these problems. But anyway, what oh. good news is that the, emula the Android emulator is now live, which means that we have both the Android emulator and also the iPhone emulator. And like I said, the great thing about this Android emulator is it's hardware accelerated. It's uh, a little bit snappy uh, and I get like gesture support. So if I press control, I get like two finger support. So, which is great. I can make two finger gestures. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop that and actually head into kind of, I was hoping to go and uh, showcase these, these big examples, which include our main demo center. So if you've used our components over the years, you, you're kind of used to our demo center. And our demo center is something that gets installed to your machine. You don't have to do anything. In Maui, you do have to do something. You have to go out and find it. You have to seek it. Uh, and like I said, there's gonna be some problems you're probably gonna have on your machine running this. And we'll see if those occur on it as well. Well, the reason is that there's so many different resources and files that have to be loaded between different platforms between iOS and Android that I wouldn't be surprised if you encounter some sort of turbulence in doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get clone this uh, and uh, this is a repository. I'm cloning it manually because I've already done this a bunch and I don't really want to rely on Visual Studio to do it. You know, for the sake of, for the sake of demonstration, let me do it in Visual Studio. So if I go to clone repository, I wonder if it will let me. So repository location, and lo and behold, it already exists, but I'll, I'll just call it demo app two, Maui demo app two. Uh, and so this is basically our main uh, demo center. So I'm gonna clone this repository, and it's not doing the, uh, the shallow copy. I like to do it doing the full uh, copy of the entire Git repository, which is fine. It just takes a little bit longer. Uh, and I'm going to go to my Solution Explorer, and I have a few different options. I'm going to go into this solution, and I get the solution view. It's kind of we have to fight VS Code to give this to us, but we get it for free in Visual Studio. Uh, and it's actually going to have to restore uh, what's here. And if I probably try to just build it as is, if I try to build the solution, it's going to probably fail. It has in the past for me, and I'll tell you the, the workaround for that. So we're building, and I think it's gonna fail. I'll tell you why. So build has started. It takes a little bit of time to build a Maui, by the way. So while that, the build was canceled. Why is that? Verification. 
please try again. Okay, let's let's try to actually not just build, but also run it. Start debugging. Let's try to rebuild. And I have a feeling that the reason why that we're having this issue is related to the main culprit, which is that if you uh, if you actually were to go ahead and clone this yourself and you were going to go ahead and restore this, uh, you have to actually pass in a parameter on the .NET restore. It's called force. So let me zoom in a bit. It's called so you do it not just a .NET restore, which is what Visual Studio does. You do a little extra. You add this extra flag called force. And I find that this actually works miracles. So uh, I have to actually go and find where the solution is. Let's find where the solution is. It's in our C-sharp folder. We don't have a VB folder because this is modern.net. And, and I also still have to provide the project. And the project is the thing that ends in csproj. csproj. OK. So .NET restore force pointed at the project. So it's restoring, and it hopefully restored everything fine. And now if I were to go ahead and uh, if I rebuild, let's rebuild. Uh, let's go ahead and maybe close and reopen our Visual Studio. Uh, it looks like DevM is confused about whether or not our build is active or not. So, you know, or we have to use this trusty task manager again, now, which is kind of like a, the analog to what we have in Mac OS when we have activity monitor. But let, let's go ahead and end this task, which is VS 2022. And the great thing is that it does not kill my emulators. My emulators are still both running and active. So these are my emulators. And I'm going to go back and uh, go without code into VBS 2022. I'm going to go ahead and open the place that I cloned this rep repository to. So it was uh, called Maui Demo App 2 CS. And this was the main solution. So I'm opening the main solution. And the point is that I want to kind of run through not necessarily things that are verified, but things that are going to be typical for a Maui user, consumer of Maui. Uh, so let's go ahead and try to build this and run it as well. So we're going to run the debugger, and it's, it looks like it's running fine. Uh, and I have my, my Solution Explorer. It looks fine too. Uh, and it might complain at some point and say that resources are missing. I don't think it will at this point because uh, I already did the .NET restore with the force command. The other thing that I sometimes look at to see if we'll have runtime errors is that Maui is changing at light speed. Uh, and so the other half of kind of why things don't work, some of it is generally because we wrote it that way and it works on our computer, but not on yours. Some of it is seriously because Maui's working at light speed and changing all the time. One thing that some of our examples do not have, but you need to add manually. Uh, and I think that we'll pull, re pull requests at some point to update our examples is that sometimes we're missing this line, the use dev express call to the builder extension method. So basically if you don't add this to the middleware pipeline, you don't have, our components working properly. Uh, so you'll notice that you'll have, it will compile fine, but there will be a runtime error in that case. Uh, and uh, it's still building, by the way. So when you see this little glyph at the bottom, that means you're, you're building. So this might be a little bit of a foreign territory for those of you who have, you know, used more responsive frameworks in the past, like ASP.NET Core or something like that. Uh, but if you're using something like WinUI and C++, you're kind of well used to it taking forever to to basically build your pre-compiled headers and to do all sorts of things. Uh, but the, the point is that we're actually, it's it's actually working in the background while I'm talking. But the important thing is you should always make sure that you have this use dev express in your uh, Maui program CS. If you don't have it, it just won't work. Uh, so if things don't work and it does build, I would say check this first because usually that's the culprit. Uh, the hey, other right. culprit, like I said, uh, yes. Nikita is saying yes. use, try to use Meteor. 
Many smiley faces. Oh, yeah, we could also... We could also get to using Meteor. The only problem with Meteor in our case is that we won't be able to connect to an iPhone. But what we can do is we can run this entire project in Meteor and uh, might as well actually. There's no real harm. So let's go ahead and actually in the last step of deploying. So maybe I'll get to uh, showing this in VS Code. But the point is that if I were going to take the same general set of steps, do it with a different project in VS Code. Uh, let's go in VS Code and point this at, let's say, our uh, source repos, which is where my repositories live. And uh, we're already in the base of the Demo Center app. There is another repository I wanted to show off today, which is how you sign documents and kind of it's broken into three different solutions, so maybe we'll talk about the first solution. Um, so we could just point it at this folder and then navigate to the right solution file via VS Code. So again, I'm gonna. This is very similar to what you get in Mac OS, because VS Code is totally cross-platform, and I'm pretty sure I ran this in Windows too. So I don't think I have much to install. But if I were to go ahead and go into the Solution Explorer, and if I were to you know, pick the solution. I believe I have to do that first and then I go back to my, my solution explorer and I'm going to go navigate to the first solution. I don't want the file explorer. I want the solution explorer. And oh, by the way, while I was talking, it looks like we got some progress on what was happening. So actually we have we have the Android emulator working fine now. Uh, so those were the steps required. So again, uh, it was basically that I have to do a .NET restore, a force uh, on the command line, and I also have to uh, potentially add the use dev express middleware line. It exists in this example, but in a lot of examples it's missing, so I'm telling you just be mindful of that, that you know Maui's changing all the time, and you have to make a few minor adjustments so that it works in the current version of Maui, because the version of, as of, you know, uh, maybe half a year ago. It's a little bit different. <laughs> and uh, the other thing is that it's going to take a little bit of time to, ru to run your emulator. So this is actually really, once it's up and running, this is actually quite a snappy emulator. Um, so I get the ability to go through our entire demo center and see things are collection view. And uh, I can also um, take them up some of our other, let's say, our, I want to actually look at our data editors see what data editors that we, we present here. Uh, so what I want to go at, get at today actually was not really related to this demo center repository. Some of this so was just to kind of, kind of showcase, hey, that is work everywhere. Uh, uh, as, uh, as Nikita was saying, we can actually run Meteor here as well. Hopefully I'm coming in fine audio wise as well, by the way. You've had uh, but some blips, but... I would have actually gotten it done. <laughs> okay, all right. Fingers crossed. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> what Nikita was getting at, and uh, he has no vested interest. There's no conflict of interest here in promoting .NET Meteor. But, but no, .NET Meteor is a great debugger. I love it. In VS Code, I use it all the time. The only disadvantage is that in VS Code, you cannot pair to Mac, which is kind of not great when you're in Windows. You can do it on Mac OS, but we're not on Mac OS. We're on Windows right now. Uh, so basically, if you install .NET Meteor, this is what it looks like. You get this cute little guy, you install it. Uh, and uh, you navigate to a, a project with something like, let's say, a Maui program CS. Uh, and uh, if I actually start debugging, uh, I can actually hit into, get into .NET Meteor. So this is basically the example we want to talk about today. Uh, and uh, in this example, if I go to the main page, what we're going to be ha having is Let's let's verify that kind of we actually do get stuff here. So I like changing the labels up a little bit. So let me say really sign the PDF file. So really sign them. Um, I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna also want to set the debugger settings here. They're down here. This very bottom bar. This is actually I actually had to enable. I had to disable the C sharp dev kit and enable .NET Meteor. So be mindful. You'll have to do the same thing. Uh, so. Once I did that, I have a few different options about kind of my 
I debug targets, and I get these available emulators. As I mentioned, you're not going to see iOS emulators here. Uh, so if you're building for Android, no big deal. If you're building for iOS, you got to do this on macOS. So I'm not a macOS, so I see only Android emulators. And the nice thing is that I get all of the emulators, including the one that I added to my Android device manager, which is the one that's running right now. I'm going to try to default to that. So I'm going to do F5 to actually uh, run this um, with the .NET Meteor debugger. And we're going to go ahead and run this in Windows right now. And basically, this is kind of, kind of thing. I forgot what step this is in the repository that I was talking about where it is uh, signing PDF documents. So, so here, uh, if I search again, Maui sign PDF. This is the repository. So, so it's Maui sign PDF files at the Dev Express examples account. So you can find this there. Uh, and uh, this, this is going to be the first example. So I think that the first one is we're going to use a predefined signature, uh, which is the less interesting of the signatures that we can show. This is kind of like not necessarily using a custom signature by hand, but it's, it's using a signature that's already stored. So it's going ahead. And I think that right now it's building. Uh, let's see where I am, my output. Time and just disconnect this. So I'll do one more, one more run of my, my debug process. Just run the debug. Might ask me to stop the ongoing process. And while that's going, I will talk a bit about kind of the main part of the matter, which is kind of. The thing I thought was not possible, which is kind of building an iOS app in Windows. Uh, so first, I should probably tell you what part of the repository I'm talking about. So there is a really fun part of this repository, which is kind of what I want to focus in on, which is drawing a signature and signing with that signature. Because that's something you really can't do on desktop. Uh, so let's go ahead and navigate to that solution. So it's going to be under my repos. I I cloned it to this folder. Uh, it's draw a custom signature, so you can follow along at home if you'd like. And open this solution, sign PDF. And uh, we'll go ahead and run this right now. And I will also, since I re since I restarted Visual C, you'll see that this is not a green icon, meaning I'm not paired to Mac right now. And I'm not getting iOS simulators. So I'm getting nothing iOS simulators. I actually have to pair to Mac again. So let's go ahead and do that. And I think this was the last IP address of my Mac that's right next to me. So hopefully, yeah, my Mac, which is right next to me, came alive. So that means I am connecting to it. I'm connecting this SSH connection to this. Uh, and so it's it's going to be mentioning in the messages here that it's verifying, I think, mono uh, and it's uh, running Xcode. Uh, but the point is that I'm going to be taking this this thing called arrival form and I'm going to be allowing users to to sign arrival form and uh, let's go ahead and start the connection sometimes I unlock my Mac in case it might help that help with the connection that's negotiating here and while that's going on at the same time we have something else cooking which is that uh, I don't want I don't want to replace it on a meteor instance. No, it's okay. So it took a while, but the debugger uh, is giving us the version of this this same repository. This is step one of that same repository, by the way. Uh, this is running in VS Code in that Android emulator. I told you it's the hardware accelerated Android emulator. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to be signing this particular PDF. What I want to do as well. Uh, is I want to show you kind of what the file is. So if I reveal this in File Explorer, I can kind of showcase what the actual file is. Uh, so if I go to Resources Raw, this is where assets are stored 
for the uh, for for this file. I mean for this uh, my program. So if I go into my main page uh, CS file, uh, so if I go to my code behind, I should be able to see uh, the the files that I'm picking up. I'm just picking up anything in my my assets folder, uh, and that includes signature demo. And it should also include, I believe, this is going to be. Let's navigate to this particular arrival card. So let me also navigate there as well. So I believe it's the resources raw. If not, it's not a big deal. I will want to check one more time to see signature demo. Okay. Anyway, my point is that I'm going to go ahead and have this signed. And so actually I should probably for the sake of security use something that's not my my real you're not your real signature my, my, my real or a fast my real i'm going to follow the tradition of tommy boy and sign my herbie hancock on this so um, <laughs> the, the movie with the great chris farley oh, so I'm not signing my herbie hancock yeah so herbie uh and <laughs> what's notable here is that uh not only did we sign this, we used the PDF document processor to update this preview. Uh, I can wait, it's not a problem. But if I go to the main page XAML, you'll see the way that we actually implemented this is we used uh, inside of the dialog, and I'm not sure where we put it here in this example, but uh, the main uh, display was inside of the image and the uh, content view of the stack layout has our content. The um, let me also go ahead and showcase the other bit here, which was let me. I think I need to run ifconfig one more time on my Mac. So bear with me here because I'm not sure if this is my valid. Um, IP address if it's not able to connect. So, 172. Okay, so let's let's forget this Mac and let's add a Mac at the IP address I just got, which is a fresh IP address. Uh, so it's 172.225 and 31 in my case. So let's go ahead and, okay, was able to recognize it, which is great. And this is my my account password. Okay, checking mod installation, which is a great sign. Um, starting the actual connection to the machine. Uh, starting the debug bridge. And it should be up and running. Okay, good. So now you'll notice that the icon here should go green soon. It did. Um, so now what I can go ahead and do is I can actually showcase the real reason for the season here, which is that uh, I wanted to actually showcase running this on an iPhone 15 Pro uh, simulator. And I'm just trying to look at different models of the iPhones, making sure I'm running on the right one. But we're gonna we already have that emulator running. It's this guy. Uh, and uh, the build has started. It's going to be building, packaging, and deploying to this emulator on our right-hand side. And uh, this is a little bit more interesting in that we're going to be actually not just drawing and signing, but we're going to be able to add a, a an ability here that we're going to touch on, kind of, which is I'm going to enable within this example us to sign anywhere in the document because if I go here into our solution explorer you'll notice that we have assets I modified the assets a bit to add one of my PDFs but the default PDF is this one arrival form so if I go into arrival form you'll see this arrival card it's an acro form it has a bunch of stuff filled out you notice here in my Sumatra PDF 
there's something called sign. What this indicator means is if I open this in Adobe Acrobat here and open a different screen, but let me move it onto my screen here. This is Adobe Acrobat. So you'll notice this is a usual acro form. So we have text fields and you could change these to whatever you'd like. But what is interesting is we have a PDF form field. We have a PDF form field and that PDF form field uh, is uh, down here. So when I was signing the original version of this example, what it was doing was that it was always sticking my signature here. That is great if you already have a PDF with a signature, but sometimes I have other types of PDFs I like to use. I like to write letters in Word and I like to generate PDFs and sign them officially. So that's exactly what I did. I generate a PDF with DevExpress letterhead uh, and I have a, you know, a, a signature form here, but I could easily do this without a signature form. So I could place this in some other location. And we'll, we'll talk about kind of placing this in other places. But right now, uh, this version of this letter does have the signature here. The signature field is right here. So it's gonna be placed only here and nowhere else. We're gonna modify that a bit, but I've already gone ahead and copied this PDF I'd like to sign into um, my assets folder. And uh, we'll go ahead and head into kind of what this example looks like. So now it's already running in the iOS simulator. I'm gonna go ahead and sign it. And like I said, the uh, the expected behavior is that it's gonna sign down here. And if I draw a big X, so you see how big the signature field is, you'll kind of see where X marks the spots down here. So that's great and all. The problem is that that's not really what I necessarily care about doing. Uh, so let's say, uh, let's stop this and uh, let's go ahead and we're gonna be doing something a little bit unusual today that I usually don't do. I usually type everything out by hand, but I decided let's try to just uncomment out and comment back in all the changes that I want to make this repository. It'll be a little bit easier to explain and also you know, like run this at the same time without having to worry about writing it by hand, and making typos. So let's firstly go ahead and just swap in the actual version of this other PDF I put in the assets folder. So again, it's in. Uh, the resources raw folder. So I go solution explorer resources raw everything that Maui has access to on the uh, on what it thinks is the emulated file system is is down here. And then we also have the other things the emulator knows about, like the iCloud account and the pictures folder and all those things. But anyway, uh, so we're going to go ahead and make Jewel City letter that PDF the thing that's available. And we're gonna go ahead and play around with, I think the hot reload functionality on this to see how we can modify this and make this a little bit better. So again, it's going ahead and starting the build and it's gonna be, again, using the same sequence of events, it's gonna be building, it's gonna be packaging, it's gonna be throwing it onto the emulator. And while it's doing that, I'll head into kind of describing how this is kind of architected. So if I go yep, go back into my Solution Explorer, I'll go into my main page. So I have a main page here. Uh, and uh, you'll notice these comments are things I'm gonna be adding in. Uh, let's, this dialog, closing it out, okay. So you'll notice that everything's implemented within one single main page. So it's a little bit different than having multiple views. And typically speaking, by the way, Maui, it's shell-based navigation. So you're kind of probably used to it from Xamarin Forms. But the idea behind shell-based navigation is that if I add like a content page or a content view, I have to make sure that I go back to the Maui program and add like a, like use transient or something like that. You have to add something here onto this, uh, uh, middleware pipeline. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I can sign this document, which is a document I added. And the other thing is that I can actually also go ahead and since I put this in a pinch and pan container, I can actually go ahead and uh, multi-touch into it as well. So if I change the emulator to multi-touch, I can actually zoom in as well. So Ooh, I nice. go back to shallow press 
I think I should be able to. <laughs> yeah, it's all the uh, the shortcuts are always different between Android and uh, and iOS. So mm -hmm. I may be thinking about uh, the Android version, but uh, maybe I'll sign this. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm really trying my best not to emulate my actual signature. <laughs> Uh, so I think you got so, yeah. it. I hope so. That's this not is your real basically signature. like a, a fake. Yeah, this is not my real signature, but this is basically some where the signature field was on that PDF I was showing. So if you would go back to kind of where the signature field was supposed to appear, it's here. The problem is I'd like to actually move this around. Um, so firstly, I was kind of baffled how to do some UI, how what sort of UI to present to users to make this obvious that this is what you can do. Uh, I actually found out that we have something called an image edit control, uh, and uh, I can head into kind of a bit about what that equates to. So if I uh, talk here, so it's kind of DX image is kind of what we were talking about earlier, and it wraps something called image, but we have something which is a little bit more high powered. It's called the image edit. And uh, it's not the DX image, it's actually the image edit and image edit has this nice little functionality where you get the ability to crop and basically the short of it is that you're cropping this blue thing here is called a scrim uh, and then this used to be called the crop frame but it's called the crop area now so wherever you see in our documentation we talk about crop frame we're talking about crop area but this is a great little control because it lets me navigate to a position on an image which is kind of what I was hoping to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart this and I'm not using hot reload for this because I already stepped through the signing process, but I'm gonna go through uh, using this with the image edit. So again, I'm again binding the same PDF preview, which is basically a rendered uh, version, a bitmap of kind of what our PDF document processor spit back out of only the first page. Uh, the other interesting thing is that we're using MVVM here, and uh, because we're using MVVM, I know that a lot of, especially our customers, WPF users, they kind of, it's kind of like being in the trenches in World War One, knowing what MVVM <laughs> is. So, kind of dealing with MVVM was like a struggle for a decade plus in the WPF world, and we kind of like made terms with or made peace with it. But the point is that because of MVVM. We have to kind of do things in somewhat of an interesting way in that I actually added something, a command, because I'm not going to be using the uh, the uh, the code behind for the main page. So the main page is here, and the code behind we're just going to ignore is this thing. So I originally set a breakpoint to find out how the image was getting loaded, but uh, we're not going to be using the code behind. What we're going to be using is the view model, the main view, the main view model for this main page. Uh, what I did, and I changed here, is I added a new command, which I added myself. Um, and I don't know if it's represented. It's It may be, sorry, it's up here. Uh, it's gonna be, if I believe I'm correct. Yeah, so I added this, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I added using this behavior. So I had to use an event to command, which is something you know of well, if you've used MVVM, where you, we're not using our toolkit. We have just started with the Maui toolkit, sorry, with the MVM toolkit of our own in Maui. It's very new. But here we're using the, the toolkit that's already in Maui. So the community toolkit for Maui. Uh, and I'm actually not handling the image loaded event directly, which is what I was doing in my code behind here. So if you go to my code behind, you see I'm handling the image loaded event. Here, the way I do it in MVVM style in my view model is I have to use an event to command behavior and I give it the event name, which is image loaded. And uh, I'm actually going to be running this command and I'm actually passing a command parameter, which is kind of like the point here because I want to, my view model, find this image and I need this image. Um, this image edit to be precise because I need to call a method on the image edit to find out information about how my crop is working. And I'll, while I'm talking about this, I'll just hit run because 
it's going to take some time anyway. But this uh, command is what I'm adding, and I haven't uncommented it yet. So let's go into my view model. So my main page view model. And uh, this is the command I'm going to be uh, using. So it's the image loaded command, as I mentioned. And uh, I'm going to be creating it. So it's not null. Uh, and uh, I believe that the only thing that it's doing is it's basically a fancy wrapper around this handler I also added. And the point is that when this whole shebang runs, and I'll hit a breakpoint here, but when this whole shebang runs, the point is I'm trying to take the image edit, which is the new control I'm adding, and make it available in my view model. If I didn't do this, it's not going to be available from my view model. Uh, and the reason I'm going over this is that it's always kind of like a solving Rubik's cube to use in a VM. And it's kind of, it's only worth it in the long run because it improves things like testability and maintainability. And everyone knows that code reuse, but in the short term, it's a real pain. <laughs> always it's a pain. So this is the, the crop box. Uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, let's go ahead and let's, uh, so I'm, I'm basically using this, this uh, crop area to, to basically place my, my, my signature. So I could do that now. Uh, the interesting thing is that this file, and let me also make sure that I'm actually passing in everything. So just to make sure that we really are kind of you know, live, I, I have hot reload as well. So I could, for example, change this area of this, uh, the crop area, the border to something like, let's say blue, and it will pick up my, my changes. So I think hot reload is working. So yeah, blue, great. So hot reload is working. Uh, and the point is I, I have this crop area that I've kind of defined by default because I really want to place my signature somewhere. Oh, my, this occasionally happens too. So let me go ahead and rerun this. Uh, and hopefully my command runs and it binds to the event. And uh, we'll, we'll get the start of my event, which is on image loaded, which is the very first thing the image edit does. Uh, I have to also go ahead and reconnect to my Mac. So I think that we're having some network issues today, which is kind of like the cause of all of our woes. Uh, so bear with me here while I reconnect to the Mac and I redeploy. And sometimes when things look like they make sense, the answer in Visual Studio <laughs> is just unfortunately, sadly, just turn it off and restart it again. <laughs> So I have to dis disconnect and connect. And if that doesn't work, we'll turn it off and turn it back on. But it looks like it's stepping through what it needs to to set up the debugging bridge with Mac OS. Unplug it, plug it back in. Exactly. Things never change, I guess, in technology. Everyone knows these steps and they kind of, they're always uh, <laughs> the, the same recipe to, to resolve every problem, unfortunately. But we'll go ahead and debug this again and again the the crop area is going to have this border which is blue which is verifying that kind of we're we are making live changes to this repository um, the point is that this command is going to make my image edit available to me in my view model and what i'm actually going ahead and doing is that by default the logic that we have in this example is that it's picking up any um, form fields that we have and i do have form fields so i do want to ignore them uh, so what I'm going to go ahead and do um, is uh, go ahead and uh, just ignore my signature form fields. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and step through the rest of the logic here. So basically this part of the logic, what it's doing is that if we don't have any PDF form fields, uh, we're going to throw up a little dialog that says, hey, you, you, have, you don't have signature form fields. And like I said, I want to ignore them. So I'm going to be commenting this out. Uh, and I'm not going to be showing the dialog because I kind of already have a plan for what I'm going to do uh, without form fields. I'm going to add a form field. Uh, and it's 
running and hopefully it's going to hit our breakpoint as well so while that while it's busy doing that it's initializing it says uh, I'm going to go ahead and make sure the logic works too. So we, okay, so hit the breakpoint by the way. So at this point, so if I go to my debug locals, uh, I have this, in args, I have this thing called the image edit, which is actually the image edit from this page. It's not showing the page yet, but basically uh, what I go, well, I'll go ahead and do is my property, which is image edit, uh, will go from null to being set to something. So if I go and go into my watch, it's busy, so I can't add to my watch right now, but if I go to my image editor right now is null. If I step through this code really quickly, so F10, oh, looks like crashed. <laughs> one, more, one more, yeah. Let me set the breakpoint a little bit later so I can kind of not delay it too much. I'm kind of like, explaining a bit and I think that's what's causing some problems so yeah I think that it's causing some issues on the pipeline by doing that but let's go ahead and uh, restart this process and it's hopefully going to skip some of our steps to repackage the application this time it's going to quickly just hit my breakpoint and I'll explain what the breakpoint means. While that's happening, let me also go down and explain what other logic I'm kind of changing here. Uh, that logic is basically that I'm going to be ignoring the signature fields and I'm going to be basically calling a method on my image edit. This is why I want the image edit to not be null because I'm going to be basically executing this code. So. This is what I'm going to be executing. I'm going to be calling the get crop area coordinates. And lo and behold, what this does is, like it, the name suggests, it's actually going to go ahead and find out where my little square is located on the page. And I'm going to move my square to where I want the sign to happen. And hopefully, I can show you how the view model is picking up the event parameter, the command parameter. That's kind of like the point of what I was hoping to get at by, by pausing the debug hasn't hit the debug yet but uh, like I said what I've, what I've gone and do, done is uh, taking this image edit it's not null I'm getting its crop area okay so now I have this as well I can show you kind of the image that the image edit is this thing it's not null now which is great I have it in my view model I'll cl click at f5 to continue because I do not want to upset it beyond what it is uh, and this square is going to let me actually uh, resize and place the signature where I want it to be placed. So I can now go ahead and just decide where I want this signature to be placed. Um, I think I'll have to anyway restart this because I changed the logic. So I'm changing C sharp right now. And one thing is that I don't want to use the default signature position. I want to actually go ahead and position this according to the coordinates I just picked up. And these are uh, document coordinates. So I'm actually correcting them by what I think the DPI correction is. Um, and I'm actually reorienting them so that our Office File API understands how to do the uh, PDF rectangle. But I am passing a left, bottom, and right, and top from the coordinates. Uh, and I think that is actually all of the changes. So I know we went over this in kind of backwards order, but now if I rebuild this, it's going to have all the new logic. And I think that it's just going to allow me to sign anywhere. Uh, and what I'm going to actually go ahead and do is I'm probably going to sign right underneath my name. So not above my name, but underneath it. So I can kind of showcase like how much fine control I have over the area I can sign. Uh, because I already had a PF for a field that was pretty much in the right place. So let's go ahead and build started. It's thinking and doesn't hurt to actually check and verify what's going on again this is the right document this is a default pfx um, you can generate your own pfx we've done that before on a different i think on our first session uh, i basically avoided finding any signature fields uh, and hopefully i 
I can passing in a null name is fine. Everything looks fine. I'm not going to get the dialog or anything like that when I don't have PDF, PDF form fields. I don't think I've hit the debugger, which is great. Just loading. Okay, great. So what I'm going to do is first give it the, the area, the place. So I'm going to go to multi-touch. Like I said, I'm going to put this really under my name. So it's this area down here to prove I could sign really anywhere. Um, and I'm going to make it a certain size. It's going to be like the, the same size as my name. So it's going to be like around this size. And now I'm going to hit sign and hopefully I can write anything. I'm going to draw like a cross or something <laughs> so you can see exactly what sort of area we're talking about. So this is kind of like the region it's going to sign. And hopefully it's, yeah, it picked it up. Nice. So basically I was able to sign anywhere on this PDF. So now you see I'm able to do that kind of mythical thing, which is sign any PDF in any place. So that's what I can do. Uh, and I basically the sizing and the DPI correction is right. So I have the exact size signature I need in this case. Uh, so the point there or the important thing here is I took our base example and I used our image edit, which is a great new control we have. I used this crop functionality and I basically passed in this image edit to my view model. In my view model, what I'm doing uh, is I'm actually calling another method on the image edit, which is to get the coordinates of where the crop is. And then I was actually doing a little correction, one for DPI, the other one because PDF rectangles and Office File API um, work a little different. So let me explain that as well. So in PDF rectangle in Office File API starts counting from down here. This is where zero, zero is in the Office File API. Zero, zero in developer land in everything else is top left corner. So you have to correct for that. That's why I, I have the, uh, if you notice here, the, the number 1200, it comes up elsewhere when I'm generating the bitmap for the DX image because the bitmap is 1200 pixels high. And uh, I'm taking that height and I'm basically starting my my uh, my height down here. You have to do that. And you also have to do a DPI correction as well. So I did a DPI correction. That's why my example works. Um, but basically the point is that I was actually pretty surprised how easy it was to quickly orient something so I could place a signature anywhere. So Amanda, I hope you follow along with all that. You're going to be testing <laughs> <laughs> but, oh my god uh, you're gonna give me a pop quiz <laughs> yes of course of course uh while we're at it let's do something that we also get for free which is that the android version of this app also works which is the beauty of building it in um building it in um maui let me make sure that my Mau my meteor debugger is not running and it is not running it looks like uh but let's Go into my debugger in Visual Studio and let's run the Android version of this app just to show that I think it's the same, no different. And in fact, it's a little bit even nicer to use the emulator for Android. I prefer it. So I'm going to head, head over to this emulator, which is this Harbor Accelerated Android emulator. It's great. I love it. It's actually really smooth to actually sign. I'll actually, I'll, I actually will sign my Herbie Hancock this time. I won't sign the lame X. Uh, and I'll just place my signature somewhere else to showcase that, hey, you could sign anywhere. Um, and again, it does take a little bit of time to build on Maui always. So I like to have two windows open. I like to read documentation and do other things. It's a great <laughs> platform for people with ADHD that are doing multiple things at, one, at a time <laughs> because you're getting this little glyph quite a lot and, you know, Honestly, it's doing a lot. It's uh, building a whole new application, this time in Android, packaging it and sending it to an emulator. And all these systems are kind of foreign to .NET without Maui. So Maui is what's making it possible. Um, the nice thing about using the Android emulator in our case is that I don't have to do anything with a remote SSH into a Mac. So I, I do basically get the ability to, to run this without really any changes or without any real pair to Mac functionality. 
Uh, the other thing worth mentioning that might be interesting is that if I go into my main page, this is my view model, this is my main page. We did uh, something a little interesting in this example in that we by default are showing the first page. This is something you can change as well. So if I, let's check out how good the uh, IntelliSense and understanding it. So I press F12 in the, the binding uh, in, uh, in my XAML and I, I got this backing property in my view model, which is cool. Uh, I'm used to like <laughs> XAML always being your enemy because I'm kind of coming at it from, I remember how hard these things were to do in WPF <laughs> um, and people eventually just resorted to doing them programmatically. But uh, the great thing is that you have really great XAML support inside of Visual Studio now. So my point is that this image was something that we generated. And like I said, this processor is the PDF document processor. And it's basically taking the first page and generating some a bitmap that has 120 pixels in height. So in the Android emulator, I have a few more options. Actually, if I press Control, I get double finger gestures. So I get two finger gestures, and two finger gestures are what I need to actually place this. So maybe what I want to go ahead and do is I want to place my hurry hang like right like in between these two paragraphs because I think it's a little bit of a challenge. So I I um I did also to to enable this level of zoom. What I did is in my image edit, I believe my main page. If you go there, here we go. I set the max scale factor pretty high. That's why I can kind of zoom in really deep. But I kind of want to scale this so that maybe it's like as big as the the two words to whom, and it's right underneath them. That's where I'm going to be signing. And I'm going to be using my, my Herbie Hancock. So uh, Herbie. Herbie. I'm drawing it kind of big so that you can kind of see what sort of oh, rectangle wow, I get. And I'll, I'll draw this at the top to kind of showcase like where the top of the rectangle is and where the sides are. So you can kind of see why I kind of picked the crop to be like a like a square as well, because this is the size of the area. So I'm going to sign the PDF and hopefully it's going to sign exactly where it needs to be signed. And we're going to zoom in and see if we got what we expected. We just, yeah, we got Herbie right here. So. <laughs> Basically, you could sign any document in any place. And this is a Android um, app. I should also say, you may not be able to tell remotely. I mean, sorry, but through the screen, you can't pay, probably see this. But this is silky smooth computer emulator. I didn't really expect the iOS emulator to even work, to be honest, because it's through an SSH connection. It's kind of like a minor miracle it works. But this hardware accelerated Android emulator is really great. Um, so again, I. I highly recommend doing the extra step, adding the the emulator you don't get by default, but you can add, um, add it, and then make sure Visual Studio can see it, because oh my gosh, it is really, it's something else. I mean, it really signs super smooth, like uh, it's it's really something else. Anyway, that was actually everything we were going to cover wow. today. I think we may have gone over time slightly, but well, I know I our audience appreciates it. We had some, uh, you know, the audio issues, so. Didn't, yeah, didn't things happen. <laughs> Always happens live. <laughs> I know, right? Um, all right, that's cool, all right? Thanks for all right. walking us through all that. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> so uh, that minor adventurer in Donut Maui, I think we're going to have plenty others to show in the coming sessions we're going to be doing, but uh, okay. I think... Hopefully you got some ideas, some imaginative ideas about what you can do with our controls. Um, like I said, image edit was what we used today. We kind of like swapped out DX image with image edit and we kind of like got a brand new application out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest, I'm gonna be using this because I like to sign PDFs. Uh, we might talk about the step two of this, which is you know, having us actually talk to web services and transferring this in a meaningful way, but you know, baby steps. Baby steps. <laughs> yeah. You like signing right. PDFs. Wow. Yeah. 
Exciting uh, times. <laughs> exciting times. All right, everybody. <sighs> Um, that is it for this one. If you're not following us yet, please do so. You can also turn on notifications so you know when we are going live. Um, thanks, Arag. Thank you all for joining us. And thanks for choosing Dev Express.